Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression. We have tangent x plus cotangent x divided by secant x times cosecant x. And we're going to simplify this expression for x values for which this is defined. Obviously there are some limitations such as uh, if the denominator is zero then we run into problems, right? So one of the questions that we should ask is, is this always defined? Obviously, if x is equal to pi over 2, you know, it's not going to be defined at 0. Cotangent is, not, is going to be undefined, so on and so forth. If we exclude those values, we should be good. What about the bottom? Can secant x be 0? Let's go ahead and find out. So if secant x is equal to 0, then secant is 1 over cosine. That means 1 over cosine must be 0, but it can't be because 1 over something can't be 0 unless uh, the denominator is approaching infinity and in that case we have a limit, not a certain value. So if cosine x approaches infinity, then 1 over infinity is going to approach 0. But cosine is always between negative 1 and 1, so that's not going to happen, right? We can also look at it from another angle. Uh, Well-known identity, secant squared x equals 1 plus tangent squared x. Well, if secant is 0, secant squared is also 0. But if 1 plus tangent squared is 0, that means tangent squared x is equal to negative 1. And we don't have any real solutions for this. Are there any complex solutions? Something to think about. Anyway, so looks like for real values of x, we're not going to have 0 at the bottom because the same argument goes for cosecant. And sometimes cosecant is written as C-O-S-E-C, -E but most of the time, especially in the United States, they're going to be writing C-S-C. -E Anyways, it's the same thing, so cosecant, just to make it standard, like three letters uh, plus the argument, I guess. Um, anyways, it's defined as 1 over sine x, so it's the reciprocal of sine. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this expression. I'm going to present two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for the first method, I'm just going to use something that is almost always done uh, for simplifying trigonometric expressions. And that is turning everything into sine and cosine, because it makes a lot of sense. Sine and cosine are very basic, and a lot of the identities are based on uh, sine and cosine. For example, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, uh, most important identity in trigonometry, and I believe in math in general, one of the most important ones. And it's basically based on the Pythagorean theorem. And also this identity comes from the same fact. Cool. And uh, that's very helpful for simplifying as well as in calculus. So let's go ahead and turn everything to sine and cosine. So let's rewrite our original problem. Tangent x plus cotangent x divided by secant x multiplied by cosecant x. Okay. Let's go ahead and replace tangent x with sine x over cosine x, because that's what it is in terms of sine and cosine. Cotangent can be written as cosine x over sine x, which is the reciprocal of tangent. And then at the bottom, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. All right, so far so good. Now let's go ahead and make a common denominator in the numerator. So this is a complex fraction. And we can go ahead and multiply sine by sine and cosine by cosine and get sine squared x plus cosine squared x divided by sine x times cosine x. And then the second fraction is just like a product of two fractions and we can kind of flip and multiply it and write it as times cosine x times sine x. Here's something interesting happens. Cosine x cancels out. Obviously, you don't want cosine x to be 0. And also, when cosine is 0, tangent is going to be undefined. That's why you don't want any of these to be 0, because when sine is 0, cotangent will be undefined. And you don't want that. So now we end up with sine squared x plus cosine squared x. And what did we just say? It is equivalent to 1 uh, from the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, this expression should be equivalent to 1 for certain values of x. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. For our second method, we're going to use a right triangle. Obviously, if it's true for acute angles, 
It should also be true for obtuse angles and larger angles. Anyways, uh, so this is our right triangle and suppose we name one of these angles x. Which one? Let's do this one. So from here we can safely say the following. Our expression was, remember, tangent x plus cotangent x divided by secant x times cosecant x. What is tangent? Opposite over adjacent. So it's a over b. What is cotangent? It's the reciprocal adjacent over opposite, which is b over a. Remember, Sokatoa, if you forget your trigonometric functions. Secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine, I, cosine x is b over c. Its reciprocal would be c over b times. And c, cosecant is 1 over sine. Sine is a over c. Its reciprocal would be c over a. Great. Let's go ahead and make a common denominator in the numerator again, like before. Or you can also multiply the top and the bottom by AB if you want. Let's go ahead and do it just for a change. So we can go ahead and multiply by AB and multiply by AB. When we distribute to AB, A over B times AB plus B over A times AB over, the AB cancels out and we end up with C squared. And now the B cancels out and the A cancels out and we end up with A squared plus B squared over C squared. But from Pythagorean theorem, right, right now this shows you how we use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Therefore, the answer is 1 in the simplest form. All right, so that was our second method. I guess I forgot to write second method here. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the graph of something, which is kind of going to give us you know, uh, another idea. And also, thinking about this problem, could there be a third method? Uh, we could probably do the following. We could go ahead and square both sides, like set it equal to A, you know, like, I don't know, maybe C, okay? And then square both sides, we're going to get tangent squared plus cotangent squared plus 2 times tangent times cotangent, which is 2. And then at the bottom, we're going to get secant squared. You can replace it with 1 plus tangent, but that's going to make things more complicated. Oh, another way I can think of is separating this into two fractions. It's pretty much going to do the same thing that we've done before. So like tangent divided by secant times cosecant, you can write it as sine over cosine divided by 1 over sine times 1 over cosine. And then you can kind of simplify this the same way. And obviously the C is going to cancel out. Then it's going to give you S squared. And this other piece is going to give you C squared. And s squared plus c squared is just going to be 1 because that is cosine squared plus sine squared. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick and we'll finish up. Here's the graph of y equals tangent x plus cotangent x divided by secant times cosecant. And yes, it is equivalent to y equals 1 except for which uh, values this is undefined. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.